Air Force confirms the SR-72 Dark Star is real. When we first heard about the SR-72, many people thought it was just another concept that would never take flight. But as more information came out, it became clear that Lockheed Martin was working on something truly revolutionary. So what's really going on behind the closed doors of Skunk Works? Has the next step in the future of American aviation already been secretly taken? Let's find out. Imagine a sleek black body that flows into a needle-shaped nose, angled wings, and two distinct engine components. You'd think we were talking about some kind of futuristic aircraft, but actually, we're describing the SR-71 Blackbird, the legendary spy plane that took to the skies during the height of the Cold War. Powered by two Pratt & Whitney J-58 turbojet engines, this aircraft could reach speeds of Mach 3.2 and soar at altitudes of 85,000 feet so high that pilots had to wear spacesuits to avoid passing out. At the time, it had the smallest radar cross-section available from Lockheed, making it extremely difficult to detect. It was also one of the first real attempts at stealth design. The SR-71 was coated in a black ferret-based paint that absorbed radar waves and dissipated heat much better than bare metal. This paint also helped reduce the thermal stress on the airframe and gave the Blackbird its menacing all-black look. Around 85% of the plane's structure was made from titanium with the rest from lightweight composite materials. To reduce waste, Lockheed engineers used a more formable titanium alloy that softened at lower temperatures. Still, flying at speeds of several max produced extreme heat requiring some clever design solutions. For example, the SR-71's outer skin wasn't smooth, it was corrugated or wavy. This earned it the nickname Mac 3 Ford Trimotor from aerodynamicists, jokingly comparing it to an old-fashioned plane. But the design made sense. Smooth skins would crack or warp under intense heat, while corrugated skins could expand in both directions without damage. The SR-71's panels were intentionally loose on the ground and only aligned perfectly when the airframe expanded from heat during flight. Even the windshield was cutting edge. It had three layers of glass with cooling spaces between them, and the navigation window was made from solid quartz, welded ultrasonically into a titanium frame. This allowed the exterior of the windshield to reach 600 degrees Fahrenheit without compromising safety. Everything about the SR-71 was designed with one goal, to stay invisible to enemy radar. They even added cesium-based fuel additives to reduce the radar visibility of its exhaust plumes. But despite all its brilliance, the Blackbird eventually became a victim of its own cost. That was one of the main reasons Congress decided to retire it in 1989. The Air Force officially retired the SR-71 in 1998, although NASA kept the last two airworthy planes flying until 1999. After that, they found a permanent home in museums. Over the years, the question of what would replace the Blackbird became more urgent, and not just because of nostalgia. During its service, the SR-71 reportedly outran more than 4,000 missiles launched at it. It operated virtually unchallenged even in the most hostile airspaces. Rumors about the SR-72 started surfacing around 2007, but work likely began earlier in the 2000s when Skunk Works engineers realized it was time to develop a worthy successor. Between 2006 and 2007, Lockheed's team, along with Aerojet Rocketdyne, started working on a next-gen engine capable of hypersonic speeds. Aerojet Rocketdyne used their scramjet, or supersonic combustion technology, to design the engine for the SR-72. This new propulsion system would need to operate efficiently at all speeds, subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic. Here's how it works. Traditional turbojet engines perform well up to about Mach 2.2. Scramjets, on the other hand, don't work well below Mach 0.5, but excel between Mach 3 and Mach 6. The SR-72 would use a combination of both, a turbine-based combined cycle or TBCC engine. This system includes a turbojet for takeoff and landing and a scramjet for high-speed flight. To handle all of this, the aircraft would also need a specially designed engine intake and nozzle. Like with the SR-71, materials became a major challenge for the SR-72. Aircraft flying at speeds of Mach 5 and beyond are exposed to extreme heat, enough to melt the standard metals used in regular planes. For comparison, steel starts to melt around 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, while the SR-72 would need to survive temperatures reaching 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit, or even higher. 
To deal with this, engineers are tasked with creating key components using advanced materials like carbon ceramic composites and high-performance alloys, similar to what's used in ICBMs and the retired space shuttle. In 2013, Lockheed Martin's Skunk Works officially confirmed development of the SR-72 on their website, saying it would be twice as fast as the SR-71, hitting speeds of up to Mach 6. The team backed up this bold claim by pointing out that the SR-71 was built using 20th century tech, with slide rules and paper. It didn't use millions of lines of code or high-speed processors. But the SR-72? That's a completely different beast born from a whole new era of technology. According to Lockheed, the SR-72's design takes insights from the Falcon Hypersonic Technology Vehicle 2, a test platform built to gather data on the challenges of hypersonic flight, including aerodynamics, heat resistance, guidance, and control systems. The tagline for that announcement said it all, speed is the new stealth. Three years later, Lockheed Martin's CEO, Marilyn Houston, said they were close to a breakthrough that would allow not only for Mach 6 flight, but also a full-scale prototype roughly the size of an F-22 Raptor, all for under a billion dollars. Then in 2018, Lockheed VP Jack O'Banion confirmed what was said in the 2013 article explaining how advancements in 3D printing and computer modeling were the key to bringing the son of Blackbird from paper to reality. The SR-72's primary weapon system will likely be hypersonic missiles, which the U.S. military is actively developing right now. Of course, some argue that launching missiles at those speeds and temperatures creates major engineering hurdles. But Lockheed's no stranger to this. They already proved it was possible when they successfully fired air-to-air -air missiles at over Mach 3 speeds using prototypes of the YF-12 interceptor. So yeah, we've actually seen hints of the SR-72 already. Fun fact. Lockheed Skunk Works helped design the mysterious hypersonic jet Dark Star for Top Gun Maverick. Just before the movie's release, John Nielsen, Lockheed's head of communications for Europe, Middle East, and Africa, tweeted that the movie trailer's Dark Star jet might be giving us a sneak peek at what the real SR-72 could look like. And here's the crazy part. The design looked so real that, according to Top Gun producer Jerry Bruckheimer, China actually redirected a spy satellite to photograph the prop thinking it might be a real secret U.S. aircraft. Originally, testing of the single-engine SR-72 prototype was expected to begin in 2025, but now, according to several reports, a more realistic timeline is somewhere between 2027 and 2029. The SR-72 is backed by the U.S. Air Force's long-term hypersonic roadmap, meaning it's getting funding and active support. The goal? To stay ahead of rivals like Russia and China. One big question remains, how much will Lockheed need to pull off one of the most ambitious military aviation projects of the last 50 years? The SR-72 will likely be more expensive and less mass-produced than even the US sixth-generation fighter from the NGAD next generation air dominance program and even if the military wanted to share it congress probably wouldn't approve exporting the sr-72 not with all the classified tech it'll be packing so what do you think what year will we finally see the sr-72 take to the skies and how much will it resemble its legendary predecessor the blackbird drop your thoughts in the comments and if you like the video make sure to leave a like Subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss more content like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the